here's the thing we need to deal with. One of the things I find is interesting is to ask your salespeople, why are we doing all these free services for our customer? What's our goal with this? Now, most goals by salespeople were defined by transaction. We're trying to sell more stuff. Yeah, but that doesn't help us control why. If we don't understand why we're doing it, we don't tend to be able to improve how we're doing it. And I believe one of the most critical things about services, all the extras you do to support your customers, is really only done for two reasons, buyer intimacy and connectivity. Because the more services we offer, the more connected we become with the customer, and the more intimate the customer feels in their relationship because they feel we recognize and know who they are. Everybody complains about the airline services, but how many of your customers will buy extra stuff in December just to make sure they stay at a premium level with your services for the next year? But how many people do you know take a flight in December to nowhere? Some airlines have identified their sales jump as much as 5% for the month just for people flying. Have it. American has a program now. If you're within, I think, six segments and 5,000 miles for $700, you can buy the next level for the next year. So you don't even have to find a plane if you're willing to pay the $700. How many of your customers will give you an extra payment in December just to make sure they get better terms next year? <laughs> yeah, you can play all you want. They got something going on there to be able to have a handle on this. So if we look at this issue of the services and what's happening with it, now we can understand why is this driving impact on the customer. Well, the reality is we're doing it because we're trying to provide more value, we're trying to solve need, we're trying to deal and lower risk, we're trying to lower hassles, make their life easier. These are the reasons we're doing this. So if that's the reason we're doing it, then the more pain we can identify with it, and the more help that we can identify the customers receiving for it, then the more likely we're gonna be able to charge for it. But we've got to identify where those pain thresholds are. There's only four reasons why people buy. They're called the core values of buying. The only, you can take anything you ever bought in your life. In fact, if you want to do an exercise with your team, build a list on a flip chart of all the, all the stuff you do that gives you a competitive advantage. Why do your customers buy from you? What is it about what you do that gives you an edge? And build a list of all those items. Our extra support, our experts that we have, our technical experts that come in and help you with the problem, uh, our inventory controls, all these other things you list. And when it comes down to, in a competitive environment, there's only four reasons why people choose a vendor one over the other. I chose you because you did more than anybody else to lower my risk. I, I chose you because you did more than anybody else to make my life or work easier. I chose you because you did more than anybody else to lower my total cost or increase my profitability, or I chose you because you did more than anybody else to increase my competitive advantage. Now, there's only four reasons why we buy. So if we can then focus on those pains that customers are dealing with that are causing them to be fearing risk or the costs or the hassles of what they have to deal with with this or the competitive challenges that are going to come out of what choices they make. If we can find those pain points, we have a higher chance of both showing differential value and being able to charge for those.